so we're here with Jumper Entertainment. I'm here with the Meringues. How are you guys doing? Thanks, how are you? Good, good, very good. Uh, so you guys just made a trip down. You guys just finished a set at the Horseshoe Tavern. Tell, uh, can you tell us about how the set went? It was great. Had lots of fun. Loved the Horseshoe. Always loved the people here. Yeah, it was a, it was a nice night playing with uh, one band we know, one band we don't. And uh, it's going to be a bunch of friends by the end of the night. Awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a good goal to have for the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all just fun and games by the yeah. end of the night. Okay. One, two, three, four! You guys made your trip down here from Kingston. How was the uh, how's the trip down? Good. Yeah, it was a good drive. Uh, rented a vehicle for the first time, so we got to ride in style on the way down. <laughs> got a nice little free upgrade because they didn't have a vehicle we ordered. So nice. Yes, there you go. That's that's a step in a band. I feel you guys rented oh, yeah. vehicles. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Was, cool. I got to do some napping in the back seat, which is pretty rare for me. Usually I'm up front in the passenger for whatever reason. So <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah, naps in the back. Nice. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, and I gotta ask about the dinosaur behind you. I saw you carrying around. Can you tell me about the dinosaur, the T-Rex back there? Um, a musician friend of mine once recommended that a way to stay grounded on stage is just to stick something in your pocket, bring a plant on stage, anything you have to do, and I just sort of grabbed that dinosaur the first time and I thought, this is my thing, this is what's gonna keep me grounded, and I've really grown attached to it since. It means so much to me. I've left him places accidentally, <laughs> and we've had to go hunting for him because I won't <laughs> let, leave this dollar store dinosaur toy behind to save my life. So. And Rex is a part yeah. of the band. He just started as a way to remind myself to not take myself too seriously, stay grounded, be myself, have fun, and he's become very important. <laughs> that's very cool. That's a, that's a much more profound story than I was expecting about the dinosaur. <laughs> It's like, I don't know, a friend just gave it to us. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, can you guys uh, can tell me a little bit about your guys' uh, songwriting? Uh, like you guys, kind of your method of that and what you guys are aiming for, uh, lyric-wise, music-wise? Um, it usually starts off, uh, especially with our first album, uh, it's ten songs, and I kind of would just come to the band with a chord progression or, or a string of chord progressions. and. And we'd just work on it together and we'd say, you know, this sounds good, we need a bridge here, or we need, you know, to connect these parts. It's a very group-oriented thing, but uh, I would say at least the first album, it was all ideas that I brought to the band. Moving forward, we're hoping to open up to more of the members in the band doing, you know, more writing, more, uh, like everyone's got input, but just, just more input is always good. Um, and Roy's, I think, uh, the lyrically is trying to go for a bit of a give and take, you kind of push and pull. Well, we knew when we were starting the band that we were going to have this dynamic of having male and female, him versus her, you versus them, um, trying to kind of articulate when people can have be having the same conversations, but those can have totally different meanings for them and how they're viewing what's being said to them even. So um, life can just be confusing sometimes and we're trying to really show that real life confusion and push and pull that can happen when you're trying to get to know somebody or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, cool. And yeah, we uh, we kind of touched about this. I'm not going to ask that question before the interview, but everybody's always asking you guys if you're in a relationship. Um, which is like from your guys' uh, your guys' stage performance, you guys have such great chemistry um, that I'm sure that's why people are asking that. You were touching on though, when you're in a band, you're always going to be in a relationship. Yeah, with, with that person regardless. Yes. You guys want to touch about touch on that a little bit because I think a lot of people who are not in bands uh, maybe sometimes misinterpret the relationships people have and sometimes um, undervalue how close of a, a close of a thing you have there. Yeah, no, it's it's true. Like even like almost every band I've been in that's either broken up or not or whatever, there's kind of that feeling no matter who these two people are or three or however many people you see them around town and there's kind of like that thing you just had to break up with like a boyfriend or girlfriend it's kind of like awkward sometimes or you're like even if it was on good terms it's still like hey I saw you jamming with that other band and like <laughs> you know and uh, so there is a real relationship when you're, you're working on songs together you're 
you know, aligning your schedules week after week for practices, uh, like, it's like, yeah, being in a full-time relationship, like just telling other people in your life, sorry, I got to go do this thing for these, these four other people. Uh, we're like a family. And um, personally, for me, I think that um, it takes, can take a lot of vulnerability to get up on stage, even if you feel like you're really good at your craft or your instrument. And so being in a band is the, that first step to you sit in a room together and you show each other your vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And that really helps to build that relationship and that connection you have with your band members because you're exposing your most, most vulnerable moment secretly almost in this room and then you go okay we're gonna go take this out together yeah. and when you do something like that with somebody it's hard to not have some sort of connection with them so yeah. <laughs> cool yeah that's a great answer cool um, okay so we're, uh, we're about a month and a half in 2019 uh, what are you guys working on for the rest of this year? What's coming up for the Meringues in 2019? Uh, we've got a new music video that we're working on currently. Uh, it's going to be for our song Deadly December, um, which is on the album. Uh, we're going to keep hopefully picking a few songs off the album to keep doing videos for while behind the scenes we're, we're writing the next album. And uh, just, just gigging around uh, where we're from, Kingston, and uh, around Ontario, Toronto, Barrie, Peterborough, you know the whole the whole 401 and beyond circuit so i think i think that's just what we're going to keep rolling with right now yeah just laying it down yeah putting it to the grind <laughs> cool um can you guys tell me a little about the kingston music scene yeah um yeah it's been i mean you personally amanda you've been on the scene for um personally i love kingston's music scene um we have some great bands there we have really long-term bands um, who have just, they stick around forever, you know who they are. Um, whether they have rotating names or members as the Meringues have. Um, Kingston's just really fun and we, I mean like maybe not Toronto, Toronto's huge, but like most smaller sort of cities, we do have our ups and downs. We might go a few months where we're like, we're not having any good shows, people are coming out, what's happening in this city? It's but, it's just uh, that city, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like if you watch, if you really pay attention, like Kingston has some great bands coming through and they have some great bands that are just from there and I mean we only have like 10 venues so <laughs> you'll, you'll catch it if you look, you'll yeah. catch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cool. Awesome. What, are, uh, what are a few of your favorite venues in Kingston? Um, we do the Toucan, uh, that's a great live music venue because it's uh, there's always no cover there so everyone can come in and they guarantee that they pay the bands at the end of the night and uh, it just makes it good for everybody, you know lots of people come out and the bands get paid, they sell merch on the side and Seems to work out for everybody. The timing's good. Um, the Mansion's another great one. That's got uh, a lot of touring bands come through there, and it's, uh, it's stellar. It's like a three four three floor venue, and uh, it's like the upper floor is where the music happens. Uh, really great place. Where else? Where else do we like? Um, personally, I like Overtime. It's more uptown. It's not a downtown venue, so that one can be a little hard. It can be harder to get some people to come out that way, but it's a beautiful stage, it's mm -hmm. beautiful lighting, it's huge, and it's just lots of fun to be there, so. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and yeah, you guys, I just watched your live performance, it was incredible. Um, you guys have such an energy, it's uh, it's really amazing. When I was looking you guys up, doing some research, um, I definitely saw people talking about, like, they're a band that has to be seen live to really get it, like, you right, guys right. have that energy. Um, is that something you guys put a lot of thought into, your live performance, or is it that's kind of your natural energy, or how, how did you guys get to where you are now for your live performances? I think the idea was thought of, like we thought of that kind of, hopefully people say, you know, things just like that at the, at the end, but we didn't, we've never really planned how exactly to get there, not like, okay, do the, the choke move and then, and then the, the handgun move and like, you know, we're not planning out these, these moves per se, piece yeah. by piece, but uh, um, we yeah, see things our, happen over and over our sometimes. Our practices are very... Casual, oh, like God, yeah. <laughs> we we stand in a circle and we all just look at each other, and like, mm -hmm. stand in our spots, and we don't really, we don't tug on each other, pull on each other, that sort of thing. And so, um, it does get us into some vulnerable places. We've had some moments where it's like that just blew that song, or that was really uncomfortable for one of us, or and that's live and learn. We're like, we'll try not to do that next time. <laughs> um, so yeah, we don't really practice really the maneuvering, but we do have discussions about like what boundaries, our boundaries yeah. and what's safe. And 
that sort of thing. So. Awesome. Okay. Well, it sounds like the uh, next band is going to start. So this is yeah. a good time to wrap up. Do you guys, uh, one last message, anything you guys want to share with your fans? Um, just, uh, yeah, I mean, hit our music up online, uh, wherever you stream it, uh, check out our music yeah. video and, uh, uh, the big thing we always say about our shows is that, you know, Love Lives Here, which we've uh, adapted from, from other bands and other shows and stuff, but it's a great way to, uh, you know, people who come out, we want everyone to feel safe. It's a safe space, you know, we can get rowdy, we can have fun, but we just want everyone at our shows or listening to our music just having a good time, enjoying life. Awesome. Cool. Well, this is the Meringues. We're going to have some links underneath this. Thank you guys so much. Oh, well, thank you, Jeff. There's so much pressure to be the one to catch your eye, hold on baby